In a year where Republicans had hoped to wrest control of the New Mexico House of Representatives from Democrats, the majority actually managed to widen their margin, but Democrats took some lumps too, losing a representative on the Navajo reservation and Senate President Pro Tem Tim Jennings. His NMAF producer, Matt Grubbs, with Chairman Javier Gonzalez. Javier Gonzalez, you must be feeling pretty good. Hey, Matt. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, look, it feels good. It was a good day for Democrats uh, this last election. Obviously, um, you know, it was uh, pretty rewarding to be there with many of our candidates who fought so hard uh, and took a very strong message out to New Mexicans about what they wanted to do over the next uh, four years and, and how they want to begin to approach addressing some of the most pressing needs facing uh, New Mexico. And so, you know, it was, it was a good day for Democrats. More importantly, I think, Matt, that was a good day for New Mexicans. I mean, what it clearly meant is that the Democrats will be able to maintain control of the House and the Senate, which is going to be critical to focusing on legislation for the middle class, making sure that we're able to begin to invest in, in communities around this state so that they can begin to generate the jobs that they need so that they can try and pull themselves out of this recession that we've been in. And quite honestly, it, was a, it, was a, it, it really was a statement against the governor and her uh, politics of personal destruction. Um, clearly, we've had a governor who spent more time uh, traveling this country, uh, um, campaigning for the Romney-Ryan ticket, less time in New Mexico focusing on trying to put New Mexicans back to work. Uh, she uh, raised a little over $2.5 million to come in and attack Democrats and, and their good name and the work that they've done. And much the way Karl Rove took $400 million and only won one seat, uh, Susana Martinez and Jay McCleskey took $2.5 million of out-of-state money and only were able to take one seat as well in that effort. And so, and I'm talking particularly in the Senate. Sure. Um, so look, I think that at the end of the day, it was an election that was a referendum on democratic policies towards fixing the economy in New Mexico. It was clear, clearly a rejection of the governor's efforts to try and interfere uh, in these state and house races. And now we got to focus on January. We got to focus on bringing forward policies and legislations that is going to create jobs here in New Mexico. And so, you know, Tuesday was really all about that first start. Um, as you look at the races, um, before we get to what's happening in January, the races that you either defended or the seats that you gained, what are the ones that are most important to you? You mentioned the Jennings seat. Obviously, that's a big loss. Sure. Um, what about the other ones? Well, look, you know, when you, first of all, let's, let's, let's start at the top. You know, we were able to, to, to hold New Mexico for the president, and that was largely due to the fact that New Mexicans believed and the fact that the president stands by their side, that he does care about the middle class, that we need four more years to continue to move our economy out of, uh, out of the depths of the recession that we were in. Uh, we were able to, re to elect Martin Heinrich to, to fill in uh, for Jeff Bingham, and, and, and clearly that was another hotly contested race against Heather Wilson, an individual who brought in a track record that was very much in line with the Romney-Ryan uh, national plans, and New Mexicans rejected that. And of course here in, in Albuquerque, the first congressional district, Michelle, uh, Lujan Grisham being able to win that seat. Again, an affirmation to Democratic uh, policies and the views that New Mexicans trust Democrats uh, to fight for them on the most critical issues. But when you look at the state level, I mean, the level where we have basically the firewall against Susana Martinez and certainly the politics that we've seen in many Republicans around this country, the rollback against women's rights, the rollback against civil rights, the focus on taking care of the, the wealthiest of of, of its citizens and kind of leaving the rest to fend for themselves, uh, the state house and the state senate was our firewall against those policies. And there was no doubt that the governor raised a whole bunch of money, uh, spent a whole bunch of effort along with her political advisor, Jay McCluskey, to, to come in and try and take out uh, a number of senators and a number of, of representatives. And when you look at the senate, I mean, the, the, all of those positions were incredibly cr uh, critical to us. But, you know, there was no doubt that the focus was on Michael Sanchez, the majority floor leader, and on Tim Jennings. And so we could just look at Tim Jennings. Here's an individual who was an independent for over 32 years, uh, who represented largely a Republican district, a district that through redistricting got a little bit more Republican, uh, certainly uh, had more uh, residents that didn't know Senator Jennings and the work that, that he had done for that district in the past. Uh, and, and you basically had him running against a, a, basically someone that no one had, had never known, a, a Tea Party uh, candidate who was well funded by the governor. And you know, Matt, what it means at the end of the day, she may have won that seat, but it's really a loss for the residents of the district. They've lost an independent voice, an independent voice not only against the governor, but against some Democratic interests. And now they've got basically a personal yes man for the governor. I don't think that that's right necessarily for that district. It's certainly not right for New Mexico. What she couldn't do is she couldn't take out Michael Sanchez. 
And people here in Albuquerque saw the amazing negative ads that were run against the senator, uh, outlandish lies that were, were leveled against him, uh, certainly the unlimited amounts of mailer pieces that went into his district. And you know what? Valencia County stood up and they said, no, you're not going to take on one of our native sons. You're not going to take on a person that we trust and believe uh, who's going to fight for our interests. And they went out and they overwhelmingly supported his efforts. And so when you look at those two seats that she focused on, you know, unfortunately, she took out an independent thinker and replaced it with somebody who's just going to walk lock and step with what she wants, and that's not necessarily right for New Mexico. On the House side, there's no doubt that we had a number of races that were uh, highly contested. And at the end of the day, you know, you know I, I say this was a year of the woman. I mean, you look at the fact that, that a lot of the women that were running on the Democratic side of the ticket won the seats that were contested against a uh, mint. Conrad James, who'd been there for some, some, while, was taken, some while, was taken out by a Democratic woman. So, you know, uh, well, I think that... He was just a freshman representative, though, right? He, yeah, but I mean, you know, he was clearly ingrained in, in, in the Republican establishment, and he was one of their promising future leaders. And, and of course, you know, uh, you know, we, we came in and ran an individual who, who really advocated for democratic policies that were sound, and the district responded. That's a district that's not very heavily uh, democratic. It's about equal, sure, it's equal, a 50 /50 and, split, and, yeah. and you know, I think people responded to it. So, uh, so at the end of the day, what you basically had was this huge effort by the governor to to come in and try and use the politics of personal destruction to take control of the House and the Senate. She didn't do that. Uh, what it means now for New Mexicans is that we need to rely on democratic leadership to really do a couple of things. One, develop a set of policies that's going to focus on putting New Mexicans back to work. And two, do it in a bipartisan manner. Uh, you know, the governor has not shown a willingness to work across the aisle. I think what we're going to see are Democrats that, that know that there are other Republicans in both chambers that really want to forge compromise and consensus. And we're going to do our best to work with them to really get forward some legislation that's good for New Mexicans. Um, uh, Senator Lisa Curtis, she was appointed to Senate District 21, uh, which is a Republican district by statewide political performance. She spent a boatload of money trying to keep that. Um, I can't imagine anyone fighting harder to keep a seat like that or to get a seat like that. Are those just areas that are now going to be ceded to the Republican Party, do you feel? No, I don't, I don't think so. Look, you know, it, it, both Republican and Democratic districts across the state, you know, I, I think that, that, you know, people are engaged in the process. They want to know who their individuals are. And, and clearly when you, have, when you have a district that, that performs as much as that district does for Republicans, you know, it's going to lean Republican. But I, I do think that we'll continue to field Democrats strong like Senator Curtis, uh, who really was very passionate about the issues. Again, another independent thinker uh, who said, you know, this is all about the district. It's not about the party. And I, and I believe over time, uh, you know, if the Republicans continue to field candidates and have views that are adverse to the interests of, of New Mexicans, that no matter what those districts look like, Democrats could win. And, and so we're not going to give up on those seats. We're going to continue to field candidates uh, on the seats that, that we lost, uh, uh, certainly the Big A seat. Uh, you know, we're going to win back in two years. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Uh, Senator Garcia's seat that we lost in the South, we're going to win that back in four years. There's no doubt about that. Um, because we, we not only know we're right on the issues, but clearly uh, those are strong Democratic uh, seats that we're going to work very hard. Uh, in cases like that, you saw voters responding um, pretty forcefully to, to ethics violations. Um, that is something that the legislature has not been good at. They don't scold themselves very well. Um, that, uh, how does that feel to you when you see two party members rebuked like that by voters who said, hey, we're not going to stand for this. You're done, no matter how long you've been here. Yeah, look, first, as being the leader of the Democratic Party, I've been the first to call out Democrats when, when we know that they've, they've committed some ethics violations. I certainly did in the Jerome Block case, and I've done it in other uh, cases as well. In the, in the cases that you reference here, I mean, look, as, as late of yesterday, the Attorney General issued an opinion saying that Ray Begay did nothing wrong, uh, that they were able to review uh, all the, the, the issues at hand that were referred to, to the Attorney General's office and determined that, you know, he wasn't in any violation. And so, you know, I think it's important to, to set the record straight on that and know that, well, there may have been claims of ethics violations, he's been exonerated, and that's not the case. Clearly, in the case of Senator Garcia, you know, she, she disputed uh, what the Secretary of State said, uh, and she was very... Uh, 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 focused on trying to win that seat and the issue of the penalties against the Secretary of State took uh, took the day and ended up uh, you know being the reason that she lost but here's an individual who fought for um, uh, poor New Mexicans uh, she's gonna be a big loss in the Senate uh, I think that she absolutely believes she was in the right 
and did not do anything wrong, and we go on. But you know, those are those are clear areas where, um, you know, at least in one case, uh, the ethics violations proved to not be true. Would you like to see Ray Begay or Mary Jane Garcia back in the legislature? Look, they were both very good Democrats who fought for democratic legislation. Uh, I think that in, certainly in Ray Begay's case, where the attorney general has said uh, that that he did no wrong, absolutely, he was a strong fighter for for the Navajo people. He was a strong fighter for New Mexicans. He'd be a great legislator back in. For Senator Garcia, I think we need to wait and see as, as this investigation goes on what it unveils. If it proves that, that she didn't uh, do anything wrong as she's believing, you bet. I mean, she was an individual who always fought for the needy, always fought for the poor, always made sure that middle class New Mexicans were at the front and center of her decisions. No one's ever, ever uh, challenged her integrity or her focus on what she's believed in. Uh, this is an issue that, that became very political towards the very end. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Um, as we move forward toward the legislative session, um, a lot of the leadership decisions are yet to be made still. Um, the agenda that's going to be set forth, um, Democrats have had a majority in the Senate for a long time, in the House for decades and decades. Um, the problem with that is that you own it. You know, you have to sort of take some responsibility for the fact that New Mexico is at the bottom of the pile in so many things. Um, is the onus on Democrats now to take another look at what their priorities have been, at what the ways to achieve what in some cases may be common goals with Republicans, better education, more people covered by health care, that sort of thing. Um, is the onus on you guys to say, okay, now it's time to take another look? Look, it, you look we're, we're, in, we're in control of both chambers. I think that New Mexicans are going to expect that Democrats are going to follow through on the promises that we made this, this last election cycle to focus on jobs, to focus on the middle class, to make sure that education becomes more affordable, to make sure that we have a health care system that's accessible and affordable to everybody. What I absolutely believe about the leadership in the Democratic Party is that they do believe in, in bipartisanship. They do believe in compromise. They believe in solutions. The good thing is that the governor hasn't been able to take out enough Republicans who've opposed her who believe the same way. So what I would expect over the next 60-day session is that there really is going to be uh, certainly uh, an effort to try and work collectively with Republicans to find uh, solutions that can address the most pressing needs of, of New Mexicans. The problem is that we've had a governor who's been more focused on the politics of, of governing than she has on the policy of governing. She's created an incredibly toxic environment uh, when it comes to governing in this state. And she's done it by, you know, really injecting some highly partisan personal politics into the equation, something that New Mexicans have never seen, something that New Mexicans don't like, something that New Mexicans rejected in this election cycle. So the question really is for the Republican, for the Republican governor. What are you going to do now? Are you going to continue to engage in the politics of personal destruction, or are you going to focus on really the, the needs at hand? And, and here's, the, here's the reality, Matt. Over the last two years since she's been governor, we know that one in five New Mexicans, and this is generational, but we haven't seen her address this issue. One in five New Mexicans are classified as being poor. We know that the income gap between the top 5% owners, uh, top 5% residents in this state is far larger than what it's ever been before than the, than the rest of the 95%. We've not seen one initiative come out of Governor Martinez that is focused on uh, trying to create jobs in New Mexico. If anything, she's gutted that economic development partner uh, uh, agency. We've not seen any types of grants available for small businesses. Uh, and, you know, we haven't seen any type of real effort to try and recruit businesses into New Mexico. If anything, we've seen her kill the job creating industries like the film industry, where they actually left New Mexico because of her attitude towards film and went to Louisiana and some of these other places. So I, you know, I certainly hope as a New Mexican, first and foremost, and certainly as chair of the party, that the governor will, will drop this highly partisan political effort that she's made to try and govern and we really begin to take on an earnest view of trying to solve the, the critical problems at hand. I, I'm not uh, optimistic, but you know, you, you never know what's going to happen. Maybe over the next six weeks she may decide that it's better to work with Democrats that are leading this effort than to not. She may decide that focusing on jobs and and lowering the cost of education are more important than driving divisive issues like driver's licenses. When, if you wanted to find Susana Martinez over the last two years, it's all been about driver's licenses and not a single bit of, of that definition can include jobs for the middle class. Do you think if she watched this interview, she would feel hope for the next legislative session? I think if she watched this interview that she should know that we're very serious when we talk about solving the problems of New Mexicans. Democrats would rather 
solve the problems facing New Mexico than to engage in highly partisan politics. The governor is the one who introduced the type of partisan politics that we've never seen before over the last two years. She's the one, along with her political advisor, Jay McCluskey, who went out and raised millions of dollars to come in and target New Mexicans who've worked very hard over a period of time and take them out just because they didn't agree with her. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, this country is built on the ability to forge compromise, to have differing views, not to be taken out by highly partisan political attacks. Hopefully she's learned a lesson in this. What I will certainly would say to her if she was listening, you know, drop the political uh, partisanship, extend a hand to Democrats, focus on creating jobs, focus on lowering the cost of education, focus on making sure that affordable uh, uh, health care is accessible to every New Mexican. And we're going to have some successes in this state. That's what we want. Certainly no shortage of issues to address. Javier, we appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you.